Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to build this, a floating office or study desk. Stick around and you might learn something. And if you do, please hit that subscribe button and give it a like. I'm not too sure if we'll be making any more videos until Christmas. So if I don't, hope everyone has a nice Christmas and a happy new year and I'll see you in 2020. All right, let's get into the video. I'm going to start building this project by building the top out of 18 millimeter plywood. I'll only be using one sheet of ply for this whole desk. That's one huge benefit of making a floating desk. You save a lot on materials. I recently bought myself a track saw and I'm totally loving it. I hardly ever need to clamp it down and it's very quick to make precise cuts. So if you're on the fence about a track saw, I really can vouch for them. I stopped my saw just shy of the line and finished the cut off with a hand saw. If you have a jigsaw, I recommend using that as you'll get a better edge. I'll just have to do some extra sanding. I used the top piece as my template to cut out the bottom half using the exact same method as the last one. I wanted to have a large storage shelf in the table as the top isn't very big so I decided to make the depth 150mm. So I cut out a long strip with my track saw and cut out the sides and my vertical supports on my miter saw using a stop block to help me get nice consistent cuts. Most people think woodworking is about accuracy, but it's more about consistency. Say, if you're cutting four table legs for a dining table, even if you accidentally cut the legs two inches longer than you have planned, and only realise after you've assembled and finished everything, the table still works and most likely would look good. But only to a certain point, you don't really want to be standing for dinner. I laid out some painter's tape and marked where I will screw and plug my table to my sides. I really like using dowels and plugs at the moment. It gives a really nice professional look. I used the same drill bit that I got in my pocket hole jig. It's 9.5mm, so I just got the same in Tasmanian oak dowel to plug up the holes. Adding tape helps with tear out. It's not perfect, but it reduces it. I glued and clamped making sure everything was square and added the screws. I added some extra glue to the holes and hammered down the dowel and cut it off with my flush trim saw. You can pick these up from Amazon for around 10 bucks on sale. They're cheap and really handy to have around. They don't damage the surface that you're cutting against or anything like that. I did the same with the other side and supports. There was a bit of chip out, so I added some glue and sanded it, making the wood blend into the plywood. There's heaps of different ways to fix a floating shelf to a wall. I went with the roofing screw and washer method. So for that, I had to cut out some plywood at the back of the desk to screw to the existing studs. I had already pre-measured, so I knew exactly where mine were going to be at the back of the desk. I used pocket screws and glue to join these pieces of plywood to the back of the desk. If you're still watching this, why not hit that subscribe button and join me for my next few projects I'm going to do. I sprayed on three coats of water-based poly. Most people are scared about using spray finishes. It's not difficult and if you stick to water-based poly, you can't really mess it up. All you have to do is mix up about 90% finish and 10% water. You might have to play around with the ratios depending on what brand you use. The HVLP spray gun I have is about $25 and it works perfectly for what I need. I took the desk upstairs and found a laundry basket to rest it on. Surprisingly, it was the perfect height for an office desk. As I said earlier, I'm using roofing screw and a large washer to fix it to the wall. Make sure you screw into a stud. These screws have a self-drilling head, which means in most cases you can drill straight into anything without too much trouble. But in my house, all the studs are Australian hardwood. And if you know much about Australian hardwoods, they like drilling into rock. So I pre drilled mine and drove the screws in all the way, making sure the table was level as I went. I used four screws in total, which is plenty strong. And since I used a large washer, that gave me a lot of surface to bite on. I added an office desk grommet to the back in case I wanted to add a monitor later on. I didn't have the right size hole saw, so I went a size smaller and used my trim router to make the hole the right size. I 
I added a little shelf up above using some brackets I found at my local hardware store. I fixed these to the wall using roofing screws. I was at Ikea recently and I bought this wireless charging pad. It's called Nordmark, but I put it in a translator and it said in English it meant North brand. I thought that was pretty boring. But anyway, as the same as before, I didn't have the right size hole saw, so I drilled and used my trim router to make the hole just big enough to fit the external ring into. To locate where I was going to put my hole, I measured halfway in between my dowel plugs. I really like the ease of using a recessed wireless charger. The problem is with hidden wireless chargers is that you lose a lot of your charging speed due to the thickness of the surface you're mounting it under. With the recessed ones, you lose no charging speed, and if the charger is nicely designed, it really isn't a nice or at all, and it can be a nice added feature to any table or desk. After I finished routing it out, I popped it all in, fed the cable through, and I drilled a hole through the bottom of the shelf underneath, and then I was done. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe.